Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 17th lecture on economics, management and entrepreneurship. Today and tomorrow we shall be discussing on two important aspects of a, any organization. Today's lecture will be devoted to financial statements and tomorrow's lecture will be devoted to analysis of these financial statements. Basically, as you will see, this, these financial statements answers two very important questions about the financial health of an organization. One, how did the organization fare in the last one year and as on today, what is the financial status of an organization? Answers to these questions are normally available in two very important financial statements. One is called the balance sheet and the other the income statement or the profit and loss statement. Let us see what these two financial statements are all about. So, the lecture is entitled Financial Statements. Normally, stakeholders of a company are could be customers, could be the financial institutions who pay money, the suppliers, the employees themselves, the owners and so on and so forth. And they often ask the following two questions about a firm. What is the financial position of the firm at a given point of time? How has the perform, firm performed during a given period of time, say last year? Answers to these questions are normally found in two major financial statements which the accounts prepare for a firm the balance sheet and the income or profit and loss statement. The balance sheet answers the first question. The first question is what is the financial position of a firm at a given point of time, while the income statement answers the second question, namely how has the firm performed during a given period of time, say last year. We look at the balance sheet first. Firstly, let us understand that there are certain concepts that are very fundamental to balance it. Some of them we have already discussed when we took up double entry bookkeeping system, particularly the concept of a firm being an entity. The first concept is that the firm is a distinct entity for which accounts are maintained. This is true for joint stock companies that are legal entities as well as for proprietorship types of ownership such as an entrepreneur who is who may be a non-legal entity. Another concept which is crucial to financial statements is that all the assets and the liabilities are measured in monetary terms, land, labor, equipment, etcetera are measured in monetary terms and therefore, the name financial statements. However, there are very important factors 
like employee morale, market image and technological competence of a firm that are not reflected in financial statements. So, this is a weakness of financial statements. So, we should know it right from the beginning. Another thing is that as we all know the purchasing power changes as time proceeds because of inflation that takes place. Whereas, in financial statements no consideration of inflation is normally considered or made. This also we have already taken up when we took up the double entry bookkeeping system, the going concern concept, the firm is a going concern unlikely to be wound up soon. The implication is that assets are valued at their cost less the accumulated depreciation. That means, assets may have been bought 5 years ago, a particular asset may have been bought 5 years ago and we can charge certain amount of depreciation every year. So, depreciation that are calculated every year are added up and subtracted from the purchase price and that is the book value of the asset and the asset value will be shown at the price at which it was purchased less the accumulated depreciation and not at the liquidation value because it is a going concern organization, it is a going organization. Therefore, it is assumed that the asset would continue to be retained by the organization. Similarly, liabilities are recorded not at their liquidation values, but at what the firm owes to its creditors. Another concept that are that is crucial to financial statements is the cost concept. Assets are recorded at their cost meaning the purchase price not their resale value or not at their price at which they can be substituted, but at the price at which they were purchased right at the beginning minus of course, as I said the accumulated depreciation. The next concept is the dual aspect concept. Already we have seen those things, these things when we discussed the double entry bookkeeping system. Assets are resources basically owned by a firm and these assets are normally the value of these assets as on today are equal to the liabilities that the company owes to its suppliers and other lenders the outsiders plus the owners equities. So, basically assets equal equities and equities can be of two types owners equity that are the claims by the owners of a firm and liabilities that are claims by the creditors of the firm. Creditors, creditors of the firm could be bondholders, commercial banks, suppliers and so on and so forth. Therefore, the most fundamental concept of accounting that we had already discussed is also true when we prepare the financial statements, which is assets equal, equals liabilities plus the owner's equity. Now, we give an illustration of balance sheet. Indian Companies Act prescribes the following format of a balance sheet. A balance sheet will have two aspects one assets and the other liabilities. Liabilities 
once again has got as we all know one is liabilities to the outsiders these three are the liabilities towards the outsiders and these two are the liabilities to the owners we shall discuss these aspects elaborately as we go on today on the asset sides side we have fixed assets and are also called non current assets and current assets so non current assets are fixed assets and investments and current assets are considered these as the current assets now we will take up one by one with the help of an example to start with we consider balance sheet balance sheet if you recall gives an answer to the first question which was what is the financial status of a company on a particular date so here we are writing as on march 31 2000 or 2000 whatever the year is so as on so it is at this point of on this date this is the these are the assets and these are their estimated values as the company holds now these are the items and this is their values the this column gives the total values for example fixed assets also known as net gross block fixed assets as i said also is known as non current assets equal to this this is a sum total of these four items and these are the different components of fixed assets land building machinery and equipment now value of land is 150000 these are all in rupees building 3 million 800000 machinery 950000 office equipment 100000 and this total 3 million this total uh, 5 million thousand less the accumulated depreciation which is 1 million 800000 this gets subtracted from this to give a value of 3 million 200 thousand in separate class in the future we shall talk about how depreciation is calculated for various assets various fixed assets and how they are accumulated and then subtracted we will discuss this in detail later now we come to another type of long term asset which is an investment this is something like a long term investment in another company this company also buys stocks of or shares of some other company let's say abc company this is xyz company it buys stocks of abc company so this is something like a long term investment and this is shown separately and this is 300000 and the company also buys various types of securities or stocks from the stock market which is uh, this particular one is very large therefore it's written separately and these are small stocks but when they are added up it becomes a very large value which is 1,550,000 rupees written separately marketable security means the company purchases stocks of various organizations and it likes to trade them in the secondary market in the stock market whereas this investment the company doesn't like to sell it in the stock market it continues to hold it hold them hold these stocks for a longer time it is shown they are shown therefore separately together they add up to 1,850 
rupees. Then we come to current assets. Under current assets, loans and advances, we have cash and then receivables, then net receivables, inventories and prepaid expenses. Here cash and bank that is amount that we hold in the form of cash and bank and the amount that we are holding in the current account or the savings bank account is 950,000 rupees and net receivables remember that a company who sells products to its customers quite often this sale takes place in the form of credit therefore no immediate transaction of cash takes place so the cash comes at a later date the amount that the company is expecting to get from its customers is called the accounts receivables this is what is written as receivables or account receivables also known as debtors is 2,100,000, but company also can give discounts and sometimes some accounts receivables are not received, they are called bad debts and they are subtracted, this is an estimated value, so this is subtracted from the accounts receivables and the net receivable is 2 million rupees. Now the next item is inventories, next item under current assets. So current assets has got cash, accounts receivables, inventories and prepaid expenses. Inventories can be in three types, raw material and supplies, work in process and finished products. Different accounts are maintained for each of them as we already know. So, as on 30th uh, of that month raw material position is 500,000, WIP 400,000, finished product 600,000. Total which are inventories is 1,500,000 rupees. Now, prepaid expenses, loans and advances, often certain amount are paid in advance. For example, rental may be paid in advance, that means for the month of April, rental may be paid in March. Similarly, insurance may be paid one year in advance. So, these advances are basically assets they are not yet expenses. So, these are called prepaid expenses or advances that amount to 200,000. We will give definition of almost each one of these items later just now. Let this be 200,000. These four together, four meaning cash, accounts receivables, inventories and prepaid expenses and advances, these four add up to 4,650,000 rupees and then previously these two were there under fixed assets and investments they add up to 9,700,000 rupees. So, this is the asset position total assets of the company as on 30th of 31st of March 2000 is 9,700,000 rupees. Now, what is the position of the liabilities? Liabilities on the owner's equity side, we have two items, one the share capital, this is the stockholders, the owner's capital, one 
there are two types of capital normally equity capital we will discuss about equity and preference capital just now the equity capital is 2 million rupees and preference capital is 800000 rupees total share capital is 2 million 800000 rupees this is also known as paid in capital total paid in capital is 2 million 800000 rupees then as time proceeds certain profits there is a mistake here in the spelling this should be earnings every year there is certain earning that is retained and not given away as dividends to the customers so if you earn all of if you add all of these earnings that becomes accumulated retained earning and in this case this is 1,700,000 rupees the owners are also owners of these accumulated retained earnings this i already have told you in one of my past lectures so here this company owes it to the owners therefore this is also included here under liabilities this comes as 1 million 700,000 rupees that is posted here. Then apart from these owner's equity there are liabilities that the company owes to outside outsiders. This is the loans that the company have has taken from financial institutions and from general public in the form of bonds and debentures. So, that could be 1,500,000 rupees and loans from financial institutions could be 500,000 rupees totaling 2 million rupees. Loans also could be in the form of these two are secured loans meaning that the company has probably mortgaged some of their assets or some such thing therefore, it is called secured loans that is certain security against the loan taken which means that if the loan is not paid back then the lending institution has the power to sue, you, sue you and then sell the item against which the loans were taken to get back the amount from the company. Whereas, these are loans of not that nature. So, the company may also own uh, owe to outsiders for the loan that they have taken. So, this is a fixed deposits 500,000 loans from promoters 200,000 totaling 700,000 rupees. Apart from the loans taken from outsiders there are other liabilities that the company owe to its creditors and others. One is accounts payable meaning that the company has purchased goods from suppliers on credit. So, they are liable to pay the amount back to the suppliers it comes to 1 million rupees loans payable could be 850,000 rupees accrued expenses payable accrued expenses payable means the company is supposed to have paid let us say rent or taxes or uh, other expenses but it has not yet made the payment that is accrued expenses payable it is 200,000 then the company may keep certain amount for pension and gratuity they are normally called provisions. So, company keeps this amount separately it has to be paid. So, it is mentioned in the uh, liability in the balance sheet as 100,000 and income taxes payable could be shown separately and not with the expenses it could be shown separately as 350,000. Now, all these 
add up to 2 million 500 thousand rupees. So, total liability is 2 million 800 thousand for share capital, reserves and surpluses 1 million 700 thousand, secured loans, unsecured loans and current liabilities together they are equal to 9 million 700 thousand rupees. This is the total liability including the owner's equity which is same as the total assets and this is our accounting balance equation 9 million 700 thousand total assets. We know therefore, what are the dues of the company to whom to how much extent the company owes and where the money is presently invested. Now, we shall discuss in detail various items that, uh, that appear in the balance sheet and in the income statement. Firstly, their share capital. The share capital is the amount raised in the share market. Normally, there are two types of share capital. One is the equity capital, the other is the preference capital. The equity capital is the real contribution of the stakeholder, stakeholders or the shareholders or stockholders. They are the real owners of the company who take risk because there is no fixed rate of dividend. When the company is doing well, probably the dividend will be paid at a very high rate and if the company is not doing so well, they may be getting less dividends. They have voting rights and or rather, but they will be the last to get paid when the company is liquidated. If for some reason the company's financial position is not bad and it, uh, it is very bad and is liquidated, then the other uh, other people get paid first. For example, the outside liabilities will be paid first, and the the stockholders of equity capital will be paid last. Their liabilities of course, is limited to the extent of the amount they have paid. So, this is a limited liability case. So, this is what is equity capital contrast this to preference capital. The preference capital shareholders get only a fixed dividend rate and they have no voting rights. So, they if it is 9 percent they always get 9 percent of the amount that they pay every year whether or not the company makes a profit, but they have no voting rights and the equity capital people may be getting 50 percent a dividend on one day or in one year and may be only 5 percent in another year nothing may be in still another year. So, these are the differences between equity capital and preference capital equity capital shareholders are actually the real owners of the organization. Normally, on the certificate a value is written value of the stock is written the stock certificate it is called par value or legal value or stated value. Company actually pays or actually charges not at this par value all the time, it may add certain premium to it. The par value may be only 10 rupees for a particular stock, the company may be charging 110 rupees and this 100 rupees is called the capital in excess of the par value. Par value could be just 10 rupees and the total paid in capital for one stock will therefore, be 10 rupees plus 100 rupees 110 rupees that is the paid in capital. So, this is what is called share capital. The next item that we discussed was reserve uh, that we had mentioned was reserves and surplus. These are profits retained in the firm. If you recall it is something like this from out of the net profit taxes and interests are paid 
and the amount that is retained after payment of interest and taxes from out of that dividends are paid to the shareholders and after paying the dividends what is retained is actually called earnings. These earnings are retained by the firm. Now, these profits can be of two types revenue reserves that is what I just now said accumulated retained earnings from the profits of the normal business operations after paying the dividends. Whereas, capital reserves refer to profits from such operations as re evaluation, re evaluation of assets, premium on the issue of shares that are not related to normal business operations and surplus is normally the balance in the profit and loss account which is not appropriated to any particular reserve account. You will realize that although we say that assets and liabilities must equal there are accounting errors and because of that this equality sometimes is not achieved. So, whenever we see up to 5 percent any mismatch of the values of assets and liabilities is usually tolerated and if assets are more than the liabilities the more amount is called the surplus and that is written down here as surplus. Then we talk about secured loans and unsecured loans. Normally, organization debts that fall due beyond one year are covered under secured and unsecured loans. We have mortgage bonds and loans from commercial banks and financial institutions against which securities are provided are called secured loans. Whereas, debentures such as bonds, notes or loans against which no securities are provided are unsecured loans. Normally, they are accompanied by a promise to pay interest at a specified rate. So, sometimes they are called promissory notes and sometimes instead of writing unsecured loans, we also write as notes payable, notes payable. Now, in case of liquidation of the company, the mortgage holders, bond holders get paid fast because there is a mortgage signed, it is a secured loan. They are the first set of people who get paid, then the creditors get paid and lastly the bond holders get paid that is the unsecured loans. And if still some money is available, the equity shareholders get that money. If the bond is a subordinated bond, then the holder may not get anything at all. Whereas, if it is an unsubordinated bond, then the holder of such an unsubordinated bond and the creditor get paid in proportion to the debt outstanding. So, these are some details about secure and unsecure loans. Then we talk about current liabilities and provisions. Under current liabilities, these are basically obligations that the firm must meet within the next one year or within the normal operating cycle if it is longer than a year. We will just next slide we will talk about the meaning of operating cycle. They include such items as accounts payable which is also known as creditors to suppliers, loans payable, accrued expenses payable for wages, salaries, interests and rentals, provisions for pension, gratuity and income taxes advance received for goods and services from customers 
for delivery of these things to them in the future. That means, the amount is received in advance from the customers, but the goods and services have, have not been delivered to them. So, these are advanced received also known as deferred revenue. So, this is also a liability. So, basically when we say current it means within one year or within the normal operating cycle if the cycle is longer than a year. Now, what is this operating cycle? Uh, we will talk about it just hold on. Next is non current assets or fixed assets. They are used over and over again to carry on the operations of the firm and are not intended for sale. They include land, building, machinery, office equipment, leasehold improvements, we shall talk about leasehold improvements just now and construction in progress. The accumulated figure of annual depreciation is subtracted from the purchase price of these assets to calculate the net fixed asset value. This already we have discussed. Land normally unlike equipment, building and machinery land is not depreciated, it is carried at its original cost. Leasehold improvements are investments by the company in painting or decorating fixtures, air conditioning equipment that cannot be removed when the lease expires. These are examples of leasehold improvements. It means that suppose the company has taken a building on lease for 5 years. Naturally, while during the lease period it might spend certain amount to make the building habitable and usable by them and when the lease expires these amounts these fixtures or air conditioning or painting that is done they cannot undo it. So, this is the amount they had invested in the leasehold improvements activities. So, they are taken as fixed assets and like a machinery they are also depreciated in 5 years time and this is generally called amortization instead of depreciation. And the amount they invest in making the building habitable by them or usable by them is called the leasehold improvements. Now, making while making building or installing machinery and equipment it might take quite a long time and lot of money may be invested in the process that is called construction in progress that is also an asset, but usually not shown as a separate item. Under fixed assets also a company may have particularly mining companies may have natural resources like mines. Normally no depreciation is calculated for such resources, but as and when mines are used or their ores are mined out there is a depletion that takes place and this depletion is amount in terms of money depleted is subtracted from the estimated reserves of the natural resources to show the asset position at a particular on a particular debt. We also in addition to have tangible assets like fixed assets, we also have what is called intangible assets that we cannot see, feel or touch and there are examples of such non-physical or intangible assets like goodwill, franchises, patents, trademarks, copyrights and R and D investment. They are also these are all intangible assets. There are different types of rules in every country that suggests or that gives guidelines as to how to account for these intangible assets. Now, for example, R and D may be taken as an expense and can be expensed off not in one year, but over a period of time because R and D investment gives rise to certain future benefits. So, it is like an investment 
it is an asset. Therefore, it is amortized over a period of time. Similarly, patents, trademarks and copyrights, similarly franchises. Now, what is goodwill? Often times goodwill is shown as an item in the balance sheet. Now, what is goodwill? This is an example of what a goodwill, what goodwill means. It is the excess of the cost of an acquired company. That means, if a company acquires another company, in that case only goodwill is meaningful. It is the excess of the cost of an acquired company over the sum of the fair market values of its identifiable individual assets less, less its liabilities. Now, what is the meaning? This is explained in this example. Let us say that company A buys company B by paying 95 million rupees. Now, the financial statements, the balance sheet in particular of company B shows that it has certain assets and it has certain liabilities, but the market value of the assets and minus the liabilities one sees that it is only 13 million rupees. The company has paid however, 95 million rupees. That means, if it sells, sells the assets of B, it can and pays the liabilities, then it only has 13 million rupees surplus. So, which means that the company A has invested 95 minus 13, 82 million rupees more than the actual net assets of company B. This amount, this amount, excess amount that it has invested over the fair market values of the identifiable assets less the liabilities is known as goodwill. This is an investment made and this is shown as an asset and it is not amortized, not depreciated. It remains as an investment. Now, investment can be of two types long term and short term. Long term investments are equity shares in other forms for the purpose of income or even controlling the other forms, the operations of the other forms. Whereas, short term investment is a temporary investment of excess or idle cash in particularly government securities such as treasury bills and all that. Now, current assets, current assets we already mentioned as cash, receivables, raw materials, work in process, finished products and spare parts, advances paid to the employees, suppliers and contractors, advance payments for fire insurance and rental, prepaid expenses paid and deferred charges such as cost of relayout written off exp as expense in 3 to 5 years. So, these are examples of current assets. Normally, they are they will be turned into cash in the normal course of business within a year or during the normal operating cycle if longer than a year. So, this is what I was telling you little earlier and we shall now say what the meaning of an operating cycle is. This is the operating cycle. Normally, cash is the most liquid that is used to buy inventory, raw material inventory and then the company adds value to it to make it into work in process and then finished product inventory and then this finished product inventory is sold to the customers. If it is on credit, then it remains as accounts receivable and then when it is paid by the customer, 
it is turned into cash. Again the cash is used to buy inventory, add value to it, make finished product, sell it to the customers, again it remains as accounts receivable and again when amount is accounts receivable is converted into cash. So, this continues. We say the cash is the most liquid, accounts receivable is little less liquid, inventory is the least liquid. Least liquid because inventory to be converted into cash usually goes through accounts receivables. First it has to be sold. If it is accounts receivable that means, already inventory has been sold. So, most liquid, least liquid, less liquid. This cycle is called operating cycle and how long an inventory takes time to be converted into cash is called the operating time. Normally, it is within a year, but some companies have several operating cycles in a year. Some companies may be very lucky in 2 3 months time they may be able to convert inventory into cash and then to inventory, but some companies may take longer than 1 year. So, this is the meaning of operating cycle. We also sometimes talk about cash equivalents as short term investments such as in treasury bills. Now, we come to the second statement the income statement. Now, in the balance sheet we showed as on a particular debt how the what the companies owes to others to the owners and to the non owners and what it possesses in the form of assets and what are the components of assets and what are the components of liabilities that we showed in the balance sheet as on a particular debt. Now, the second financial statement is income statement. Now, income statement is I have shown it in a graphical manner. Let us say that this is the datum line and that the gross sales after selling the goods to the customers, the revenue is the gross sales. But from the gross sales, certain amount will be returned as bad or bad quality products or something they are returns or there are defects or the company may give certain discounts or as I wrote earlier uncollected accounts or bad debts. So, the by that amount the sales will be reduced. So, if we subtract estimated value of discounts returns and uncollected accounts then our net sales is only this much that is gross sales minus this is the net sales. Now, out of this net sales we subtract the cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold is labor cost and material cost and power cost and other overhead expenses that are charged to the products that are sold that is cost of goods sold. If we subtract from the net sales the cost of goods sold we have gross profit. Now, from the gross profit if we subtract the general and administrative expenses and the selling expenses then we get the operating profit. Recall that gross profit is calculated by subtracting COGS from net sales. COGS has the, the material cost, labor cost and factory overhead expenses. The other expenses are written separately as general and administrative expenses and selling expenses. These two types of expenses added together is called operating expense. And if we subtract from the gross profit the operating expense, then we get 
operating profit. The company may have certain other income from various investments that it might have made, certain investment in other companies or in certain bonds of certain bonds or short term investment it might have made that are not basically the operation its own operations it is out some other operation, but not central or crucial to the company itself therefore, it is shown separately. So, gross profit means net sales minus the factory cost of production cost of production operating profit basically means not only factory cost, but also companies other expenses that are required to sell the product. And if we add to it other income, what we have is called profit before interest and taxes. From out of profit before interests and taxes, if we subtract the interest expense, then we get profit before tax. Profit before tax minus estimated tax income tax is called net profit. Look that net profit this word net is used only here and not anywhere with profit not anywhere before. So, net profit is calculated only after all expenses including interest and income tax are paid that is a net profit. So, net profit therefore, is the operating profit plus other income minus interest expenses minus estimated income tax. Now, from net profit the company now decides how much to give dividends to its owners and if they decide to pay these dividends what remains is the earnings in that particular year. These earnings over different years are added up to give what is called accumulated retained earning. So, today we discussed in detail balance sheet it has got two basic uh, divisions assets and liabilities under assets we had fixed assets and current assets we gave different components of fixed and current assets we discussed them in detail under liabilities we had long term investments and different other short term investment and accounts payable type of uh, components of liabilities and then we had just introduced income statement where we said that from the gross profit made when the goods are sold there are different types of expenses one is the factory cost next the general and administrative expenses and the selling expenses are subtracted and then from there we we subtract or rather we add first of all any other income from other sources before we subtract interest and taxes. Once we subtract the interest and taxes we get what is called net profit and then based on that we decide how much to pay dividends. If dividends are subtracted then what we get is earnings. So, in our next lecture we shall discuss in detail the various components of income statement and then later we shall show how the numerical values given in the financial statements can be used to get to know the financial health of a company. Thank you very much.